Hey guys, this is Mark. With this lecture, we start a very exciting subject of database integration in your UI builder applications. Let's face it, most of the apps are data driven with the data being stored in a database and being able to retrieve data, much like storing data in a database, updating objects or deleting objects, all of those tasks are important. Uh, the very first one, uh, the very first lecture in the, in this series will be on getting data out of the database. The mechanics of getting the data out of the database in Codeless, in UI Builder, is very straightforward. There's only a handful of blocks that give you an ability to get the data out. In fact, there's just one block that has a ton of different options where you can provide a query to specify what kind of objects you need to get. You can specify sorting options, paging options, uh, identify specific properties you want to get out, identify relations you need to bring back all of all of those possibilities exist so the mechanics are simple the details could get rather complex because the schema that you can build the actual structure of the database that you can build in back endless could get very complicated and we have seen applications that are being created that have very complex schemas and this doesn't mean that back endless makes it complicated this would give you a lot of possibilities to structure it in a way where the database structure really reflects how you represent entities in the UI. So there is a lot to learn, but we have to start somewhere and we'll start with the topic of retrieving data from the database and how to render it in the UI and just start building up on that knowledge so you can learn more and more and more and can start applying everything that you learn in this course to build real sophisticated data-driven applications. So as we have done before, we'll jump right into UI Builder to start exploring integration with the database. Now that we are in UI Builder, I created a new page. As you can see, the header says data retrieval. Let's talk about available options for retrieving data from the database. If you're looking for something super simple where you don't need to build a lot of UI components and interactivity and uh, add, adding logic for retrieving data from the database, there is a component that does pretty much everything related to a database and it's called data table. The way it works is very straightforward. You put data table right onto your page. You can adjust the height, width, and the various other properties. I'm going to set the height to 100%. So it is all stretched out. And then you point it to a single table uh, from where you want to retrieve the data. A couple of data tables that I have pre-created and you can do that as well by downloading a file uh, from the link that is in the description for this video, you will get three tables. Ignore all other ones in my application. So one of the tables is a city. City has a relationship uh, column to a country. And then this is a list of all the countries. And then there is another table called country language. And country language lists all the languages uh, with the percentage uh, of that of every single language as it relates to a country so all these three tables are related to each other back in ui builder now we have the data table and if we select the table to be for example city the system automatically pulls all the columns which exist in that data table you can configure the list of columns by using this configure button and in here you can hide some of the columns by the way the columns such as created updated owner id and object id are available in every single data uh, database table more than likely you will not need to show them unless you want to show the created uh, column that shows when any given record was created you can change the order of these tables you can control whether the data in that column is searchable editable scrollable all of these options are available right there click apply and then only these columns are going to be shown there is a bunch of other options like such as enable searching sorting paging real time whether you want to allow creation of new records so see if i select this there's going to be a little plus icon that will let you create new record and so on but i'm digressing because in this video in this lecture we're focusing strictly on being able to retrieve data from the database so as far as the retrieval, it will work out of the box without any, any additional logic. And as you can see, I'm going to open this page for preview and we instantly get all the data and uh, the paging is available out of the box. So we can select 50 uh, cities at a time 
and then just start paging through all those cities and uh, you can see that it works uh, flawlessly uh, with with all of that functionality available right there and uh, you can sort the data by available columns because they are selected as sortable so this is the simplest mechanism to include data retrieval in your application and this this is just a single component it doesn't need to stretch out over the entire page it could be just an element somewhere on a single page there is some additional logic that you can configure for the data table so if you go into the logic section as you can see there is a bunch of data binding parameters and then several events that occur so the events are fairly self-explanatory such as on before appear on appeared on disappeared when the record is selected so when you click on the record this event handler is called and then in there you can control some additional logic and these are when object is a record is created updated or deleted and then data binding components every single one comes with a tooltip that describes what it is and uh, uh, the most of them are very self-explanatory where you can do some additional logic around the look and feel and the contents of your data table in some cases you need to change the way the data is rendered and therefore the data table may not be applicable and uh, of course there is another mechanism to bring data back from the database and apply it in some special logic and that's exactly what I would like to explore further. In order to demonstrate custom data retrieval, I will switch to another page that I have put together and I will demonstrate how it works first and then we'll go through the logic that is used by this page to make this happen. Let's run the page. And what happens here is the page retrieves data from the country's database, sorts the information in the population and the surface area, fields of each individual country. It retrieves the countries with a population greater than 1 million, I believe. And as you can see here, the data is sorted by population, but it also shows the surface area in green. So the, the orange bars is the population, size of the population, and the green bars is the surface area. So here you can see visually the countries that have larger surface areas, but smaller populations. So for instance, you can see how Russian Federation uh, compares with China and, and so on. And you can click uh, this button to order it by surface. And now the same data is uh, ordered by a different criteria. Let's take a look at how this uh, page is implemented. So this is the UI structure. And uh, the very first thing that happens is inside of the page logic, specifically in on page enter. It uses a custom function called get countries and then in the get countries it provides one parameter which is the sort by and you will see why I put it into the function let's take a look at this function implementation switch to functions and this is our get countries so in here this is the logic for get countries and what happens here we use this load table objects block which retrieves data from the country table with the where clause or the condition that population is greater or equal 1 million. Then it uses the sort by parameter, which is the argument passed into this custom function, and that this sort by parameter it just goes directly into this block. So then what happens is we get the collection of these countries and it's limited by 100. Of course, we could load more with some additional logic, but right now it's limited by 100. So this country's list variable contains a list of the countries. Then we start a loop and we go through every single country and we identify which one has the highest max population and the, the maximum surface area. So we kind of loop through and identify if the max population that we currently have is less than the population of the country in the current iteration. Then we set population to be uh, the number that is associated with that current country. Once we know the maximum size, we start the second loop and what we do is we calculate the percentage that that country has for both population and the surface area so this way uh, we can just start visualizing this data so now every single country object will have a property population percent and the property surface area percent which is exactly the percentage uh, in relationship to the maximum that that country has so and then what we do is we return this country list now switching back to the page on enter 
we get that country list and we set that as the dynamic list items of the countries block. So let's switch to the inter user interface. And the countries block is going to be this one. As you can see, it says the countries. This block is configured with a dynamic list behavior, its own data container. And then when the block has dynamic list behavior, what happens automatically in UI Builder framework is that for every single object in that list, it starts replicating this con its content, giving the template that is really created a chance to render itself. And then the template for uh, this bl uh, block for this with the dynamic list behavior is to render the country name in this text. And then these two blocks, they will just adjust themselves according to the percentage that we calculated. So if this text right here, it has data binding to the property name and name is the property in the country object. And then that country object is really a record from the country table. Therefore, the columns that exist in that table become properties that can be used in data binding. So this is how the name of the country is rendered. As you can see, we have here names of these countries. Let's take a look at how the, the actual bars are being set. So if we click on this little block and go into the data binding for it, then in before appear, we get this block one data and block one data is going to be the actual country object because the, the parent countries block being the dynamic with the dynamic list behavior, it will pass that each individual country to its children so they can render themselves. So from this block one data, which is the country, we get population percent that was calculated earlier. And when we modify the property in the style of that block, uh, in this case, this is going to be the orange block. So we modify the property width and set this as the percentage that it needs to be rendered as. And this exactly the same thing happens in the green block. If we go in here, you see we get the style of the surface area and surface area is the actual green block right here. So it kind of overlaps with this little toolbar, but it does say surface area in there. And in fact, you can see the ID is surface area. And in here, in on before appear, we set the width of the style of the surface area to be the percentage of the surface area percent. So as you can see, the logic is very, very straightforward. Now we have this button order by surface, and there is another button order by population. And what happens here, if we go into the logic, what we do is we reuse our custom function to get countries, but we provide a different sorting criteria. So we get these countries now sorted from the, well, these countries come from the database. We get these countries sorted by a different criteria. And we again, repopulate our block with countries with that information. So as you can see here, we're basically keep going to the database to get this information, which in reality may be excessive because we already have that information and we may uh, sort, it, sort it in memory. But the counter thinking could be that once you sort by different criteria, the set of countries may be different that comes back from the database. So we really rely on the database to do that sorting for us. So it's a very simple but effective example of how to render information from the database in a very custom fashion. Let me demonstrate another example using the block component, specifically with the direction of rendering that could be quite helpful for many other use cases. To do this, I will create a new page. Let's call it data retrieval three. In this example, what I would like to do is to render a list of countries and that list will go top to bottom in the vertical fashion. And each item in that list will contain another list that goes horizontally. And that second list that goes horizontally will contain a list of the cities that belong to that corresponding country. In order to do this, I will set up a block and that block will be marked with dynamic list behavior. Let's name this block countries. Inside of countries, let me add text and text will contain the country name. In fact, we can set up data binding right now because we know that the name property will contain the name of the country. And there is also going to be another block. 
and that block will contain a list of cities. So what we need to do, this block will also be marked with dynamic list behavior. And that block will contain a block that will contain <laughs> the name of the city. So uh, I know that sounds complicated, but let me actually make these changes so you can see exactly how I'm going to visualize this. So here's what we have at this point. We have a block that is called countries and it has dynamic list behavior. Any contents of this block become a template and that template will be replicated top to bottom because that's the direction of the countries block. The countries block has another block called, called cities and that block will go direction left to right, which means any contents of this cities block will be replicated left to right with all the data that is assigned to cities. The template for the cities is a single block that contains text. So this will be the city name for a city that belongs to the corresponding country. And this will be the structure that is going to be sufficient for now. So let's start grabbing data from the database and assigning it to various components here just to get the visualization going. To get the data, let's go into the page and switch to logic uh, for the on page enter event. And in here, if we go to the data API under backendless, this is where all the database related blocks are located. The one we want is the load table objects. So this load table objects we will be grabbing data from country. And that's the name of the table. Let's get maximum 100 objects. If we want to get some sort of sorting, what we can do is go to text, grab text, and then in the sort by, we can sort it, for instance, by name. There are two ways to place these objects into the data model. One of them is by using dynamic list. And then in here, we can set dynamic list items to the countries block, like, like this. Alternatively, what you can do is go into object and set property in page data, call the property countries data model, or you can call it anything you want. And this load table objects will go into here. In this case, if you take this approach, then the countries data model property will need to be used in data binding for our countries block. So if you go here, which you will see here in the dynamic items logic, you can just put this property countries data model. Either approach is equivalent. It doesn't really have pros and cons. It's completely up to you which one would work better for you. I will use the, I will use this approach with dynamic items logic, which means I can get rid of this set dynamic list items. So at this point, the data is going to be in the data model and then the countries block will be initialized. So let's see what we get at this point. So that's good. So now we got individual blocks replicated where each block represents its own country. In fact, just so they're visually a little bit better differentiated, what we can do is this cities block could have some decorations such as the border. Let's give it some nice light gray. All right. I'm not sure if it will show up at this point because there is really no content, but let's take a look. All right. So we got some nice blocks. So inside of each block, what we want to do is we want to start seeing little squares where each square will contain the cities of that corresponding country. By the way, we need to add a little bit of a padding between individual rows. In order to do this, let's select cities and add some bottom margin. For example, five pixels should be sufficient. 
Let's rerun just to see if we got that margin. Okay, so now they're not sticking to, to one another. So the question is, now that we have a country, how do we get all the related cities for this country? In order to answer this question, let's take a look at the database structure. So here's the country table. And as you can see, the country table has only relationship to the capital. It doesn't have the relationship to the corresponding city. However, if we take a look at the city, you see that the city has a relationship to the country, which means that once we know the actual country, we can still get a list of the cities. And let me show you how that will work. Notice that the relationship from city to country is through a column called country. And that's going to be critical in order to get the related data. Let's switch to the front end and select the cities block and go into the data binding for the cities. And in the dynamic items logic, what we will need to do rather than using data binding, we actually need to get logic to retrieve the cities that belong to the country that corresponds to that specific row. Click add logic. And then the cities data, this block, will represent a specific country. So what we will want to do is go to data API, grab this load table objects, and here we will be loading data from the city table. And then we will use this where clause, which is a query that will allow us to select specific cities where, which belong to the country represented by the city's data. This where clause will need to be composite text. I think I selected the wrong guy. This create text with. And in here, it will look like this. country dot object id equals open single quote we'll need to add one more item here copy this to the third position to close the single quote and then this one will be the property from the city's data get property object id of city's data so and let's select 100. And by the way, we can also sort the cities by name. Or we can sort it by any other property, but sorting it by name would probably be good. So this is, uh, this is, this is exactly what it's going to take to get all the cities for every single country. And let's see what happens now. There you go. So now we start getting some cities for every single country. I think this is pretty cool. There are a couple of things that we want to fix. Like, for example, for Argentina, we got more cities that can fit in a single block. So what we want to do is have them wrap to the next line. Let's fix that. This cities block is selected. And if you want to do wrapping, you can use flex wrap to wrap. And this way they will go to the next line. Let me show you. Let's find Argentina. And as you can see, in Argentina, as soon as it didn't fit, it wrapped to the next line. Alternatively, if you don't want to wrap to the next line, but you want them to show in a single line with some nice scroll bar, let's remove this flex wrap. And the overflow under general could be scroll. And let's see what's going to happen now. So here's Argentina. And as you can see, we now can scroll through individual cities in Argentina. And the same thing is going to happen with, like in Brazil, you can see that they are scrollable. So with this approach that I just demonstrated, what we are doing is we're making one main query to get a list of the countries, and then we do subquery for individual country to get the cities. How did we arrive at that subquery? Well, it's sort of a thing that you need to know about backendless database, but I believe it is quite intuitive. So here, let me just show you how to work with these queries and practice with them and understand how they work. Uh, for instance, if we take a country and in here, let's select Argentina. We're just going to find uh, what we can do is in under name, uh, we can just find Argentina right here. Here's Argentina and let's find object ID of Argentina. And the object ID of Argentina is this ARG. So if we go to city 
and we go to rest console we can just say country dot object id equals arg close the quote and this is exactly the where close that we're composing in a ui builder click get and that re returns a list of all the cities and if we want to make exactly the same query put the page size to 100 click get and now we get i think pretty much all of them additionally if you want to make it more visual without all the json in here if you take this query and go to data browser and paste it right into the search bar if sql search is selected then this will just run the database query so these are all the cities in argentina in fact if we click on this country relation it will open argentina there you go so this will be argentina so that's how it will work to learn more about the actual capabilities of the database i recommend going through missions like if you go to the missions section and start going working through all these missions you will learn a lot about the database and how to structure queries and all the backend side of things but at this point uh, i think this demo is uh, illustrates the capability of running multiple queries and using the direction of the block component to your benefit to structure your ui and of course the block component and with also the container component they give you the flexibility to to structure your ui in different ways you could easily place the panel into here and do custom rendering for each country in a panel or for each city so that's going to be uh, pretty much it as far as what i had planned for this lecture i think it turned out to be rather long but this is a, a very important subject and uh, i hope you learned a thing or two thank you for watching this video and as always happy codeless coding